Hi everyone. This is a tutorial about um, our Vectorworks Basics page setup. So if you refer back to your notes, V2 Vectorworks Basics getting started page setup, this is uh, me demonstrating how to do it for you. So if we follow along the instructions, we're going to start by looking at section one page setup. Now, just as a refresher, uh, you have your basics palette here, which is the tools that you need um, to actually draw. You have your tool sets, which I will go through a, a bit later in another tutorial. We have our attributes palettes, which is where you can change the color fill and the color of the pen, the thickness of the pen and the opacity of the shapes and things that you draw. Um, we have our navigation palette where we have our design layers and we have our sheet layers. They're the two main layers that you should know about. And we also have our object info shape here, which uh, gives you all of the property information about the objects that you've clicked on. Uh, we have our view bar up the top, which gives you lots of options in terms of how you view your drawing. Uh, and then this tool here underneath it is actually called the tool mode bar. So when you click on different shapes, you'll notice that the toolbar or tool mode bar changes. Um, and then you get lots of options by using this bar in how you draw, for instance, this circle. So they're the main um, components of the interface at this point. <clears throat> now, what we'd like to do is set up a Vectorworks page so it's all in the right format for you to start your drawings. To do this, we're going to follow along and in section one of page setup in our notes, it says um, we want to be working in A3 typically. So we're going to set up an A3 page. Now to do this, we go to file, page setup. And then what we're going to do first is head to our printer setup. When the printer setup dialog box comes up, what we're going to do Let's change the size to A3, make it a landscape and ensure that the scaling is on 100%. Press OK. <clears throat> now what we want to do is make sure our pages aren't scaling themselves. So to do this, we're going to turn the horizontal page to one and the vertical page to one. And as you'll see, when you click on height, for instance, these dimensions here have changed and now they are the dimensions of an A3 page. So now we've set up our A3 page and you may have noticed that this box here just changed a little bit. So that's our first setup. Now if we go into section two of our notes, document settings, a couple of other things that landscape designers like to do is to make sure that their document settings are set up to their own preferences. So in this case, we're gonna start with file, document settings and document preferences. Now in here, just so that you're aware, there's a whole range of different kinds of things that you can go through preference wise to set it up the way that you prefer to. Um, we don't really need to do anything, but I do want you to notice that should you for whatever reason decide that you don't like the dimension styles that are used, this is where you get to change them. So we typically use arch, but there's a lot of other different um, styles of dimensions here that you could change. So we'll just click OK because we're usually happy with that stuff. Now we're going to go back into file document settings and choose units. The important thing about <clears throat> units here is that we want to work in millimeters. So when we open up the units dialog box, we've got our white panel to the side. We're just going to click through each of these parameters, the dimensions to start with, and make sure that our length units are on millimetres, that we're using decimals, that our area is in square metres, our volume is in units, and our angles is in, is in degrees. They're the main things that we want to make sure of. When we do our square metres, the precision means that it will be a square metre at um, three decimal points, same with the volume. OK, the angle will be shown at two decimal points. You can change these to suit. Dual dimensions usually comes up in feet and unit and inches. Sorry, so let's change that to millimeters. 
uh, energos are metric, structural kilograms, cool, and materials are metric. To be honest, I don't know what energos are. Press OK. Now, the next thing we want to do in our file document settings is document setup. <clears throat> now here you see that it's in millimeters because that's what we've chosen. The layer scale is one is to 50. We want to change that to one is to one for the moment. So that everything is drawn at one is to one and we'll change that when we get to our design layers. And you can see our drawing area is 83. So perfect, click OK. You can see that the page has changed again, but it's set up very nicely at A3 size in millimeters and at one is to one. Now, the next thing we want to do is set up our interface. Um, mine is already set up, but in order to do it, what we need to do is go into Windows, Palettes, and make sure all of these things are on that you can see now. So when you click on Object Info, Shape, Data and Render should come up. We want the navigation on. Um, we don't need classes on, but we do want design layers sheet layers, viewports, saved views and references. We don't need our visualization just at this point. That's usually a 3D mode. We want our snapping tools on, our attributes and our resource manager, as well as our basic and tool sets. So when you've clicked on all the right ones, you can move them around. And to do that, you simply click on the blue bar and move them to wherever you like them. OK. The other thing you can do with these palettes is use this bell to auto hide them. So when you do that, if you click auto hide and move off the palette, you'll see it goes to a blue bar. I often do this for the resource manager because it's such a big palette and put it up towards the top of the screen. The object info I like to have open as well as the navigation palette because they're the ones that we often use. So once you've set up your palettes and you're happy with where they're located, you can simply press save palette positions and it will tell you that it's saved it somewhere. So we're all set up. Good. Now the last thing we're gonna look at is our options and workspaces. So to do this, we're gonna go Tools, Options down the bottom here, Vectorworks Preferences. Now there's a whole range of preferences through here that as you get accustomed to Vectorworks, you may wish to change. Um, I certainly have never really bothered with it, um, <clears throat> but it's up to you. For now, I think just leave it at the default. Um, and as you get uh, more skilled at it, you may wish to come back here and change things up a bit, but for now, Let's leave it. So just go OK. Now we're going to go to Tools, Workspaces. And we're going to go into Edit Current Workspace. So the dialog box Workspace Editor pops up. This is basically where you can change and um, modify the things that you kind of see under your menu. So at the moment, in, if I click on File Menu, um, I've got new, open, so on and so forth. So um, again, I don't touch these things, but should you get more accomplished at Vectorworks, you can certainly um, amend how you see your menus, your tools and your keys. So tools, keys, okay. These are your quick keys. All right, again, just press okay. Not changing much about that. Here we go. Um, next thing. <clears throat> so the next thing we want to do in this package is section four, which is import a PDF and or an image onto your design layer. Now that we've set up the drawing properly, um, we're in a good position to actually start doing um, a little bit of work. And in this tutorial, the first bit of work is to bring in a PDF. So to do this, we want to make sure that we know the um, length 
of something in our PDF. So I'm going to go in and find my file wherever it is. Let's have a look. Here it is. So this is a PDF of a preschool um, that I did a while ago, I think three or four years ago. Um, it's a quasi construction, quasi um, design sort of thing. Um, it was if it, it followed the brief and it fulfilled the client's needs. So um, don't go too hard on the criticism. But um, what I do want to show you is on a survey plan, which is the underlay of this concept plan, you get the dimensions of your boundaries um, given to you. So in this case, I can see that my boundary is 15.31 metres. So from here to here, it's saying that it's 15.31 metres. Um, so I have a known dimension of my PDF and that is really important and I will demonstrate why in a minute. Okay, so I'll just pop out of that. Now remember that we're working in millimetres, so um, 15.31 metres is 15,310 millimetres. So that is the unit of measurement we will be working in. Right, now that you've got your PDF and you have a known dimension, let's have a look at our setup. The first thing we're going to do is go to our navigation palette, which is this one here. We're going to make sure we're on our design layers, which we are. So that's the first one with the stacks here. Um, and we want to change our layer options to show, snap, modify others. This simply means that for whatever layers you decide to work on, you can see some of the others as well. And that's kind of important when you're doing design work um, to see what else is there. So that's the first thing we're going to do. The second thing is we're going to create our first design layer. Now, there's always one that defaults into Vectorworks called Design Layer 1. We're just going to leave that there. What we're going to do is right click anywhere in the white space and click on New. And we are going to name this PDF because that is what we're doing with it. So you can see that I have a new design layer now. I double click on it and it comes up darker and it has a tick against it. This is how I know that this is the active design layer. This is the design layer I will actually be drawing on. If I double clicked on design layer, you can see now it's bold and ticked. I would be drawing on this layer here. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we want to work on our PDF layer. So double click on it, make sure that's your active layer. Good. Now, we simply want to bring in our PDF to begin with. So let's do that. To do that, we need to go to File, Import. Now, if you have a look, you can see that there is a lot more than just PDFs. There's images, there's all kinds of files we can bring in, including SketchUp files. Today, we are just going to bring in our PDF, Import PDF. So go and find your PDF wherever it's been saved. This is my preschool plan. And you have an option here. Um, often your PDFs might be multiple pages, so you can actually choose which page that you want to bring in or if you want to bring them all in, it's up to you. But for me, this is one PDF page, so I'm just going to bring in the one page. Press OK. Here it comes. Now there it is. My PDF has been directly brought into my PDF design layer which is good. However, <clears throat> there is a little problem um, with just bringing it in and doing nothing else with it. You can't assume that it's to the right scale. So I, if you remember, we spoke about this particular boundary here being 15.31 metres long, which is 15,310 millimetres wide. How do we know what this PDF uh, length is that's been brought into our drawing. What we do is we use our tape measure tool. So click on your tape measure. We're going to click one end of the boundary that we're working with. I'm going to click on the other one. So you can see the length of this is 153 millimetres. 
Now I'll just do that again. We're going to click on our tape measure on the corner and you'll see that white floating bar with blue writing come up as I'm moving my tape measure. The um, measurements are changing when I get to where I want to be. I can see that is 153 millimeters. That is not the same as 15,310. So how are we going to change that easily without having to do too much maths? Well, do that. What we're going to do is go into modify and we're going to go into scale objects. Now this is really cool. Um, you can see with scale objects you can um, use a symmetric value which means you can times it by two and it doubles for instance or times it by a scale factor of 0.5 and it halves the size of your drawing but we don't want to do that. What we want to do is pop in the current distance which we know is 153 millimeters and then put in our new distance which is already there but it's 15,310 millimeters and we want to press OK. Are you sure you want to scale the entire drawing? That is important to note. So down here we've got entire drawing ticked. In this case, yes I do because it's the only thing in there I'm happy to do so. If however you wanted to scale an object, a circle for instance, and leave everything else on your drawing where it is, you would untick this and make sure that you're just scaling that circle, for instance. So it's just a reminder that when you're scaling objects, this automatically ticks on. All right, yes, we do. And then it will go through its processes. And if I use my wheel in my mouse, I can zoom out. And if I use my pan tool, I can move this around. So I'm going to zoom back into my 15.31. I'm going to take my tape measure tool again and remeasure it. And bingo, we've pretty much got the exact dimension we're after. We're in the 15,000s. And if I could hold it steady enough, it would show up as 15,310. So we've scaled our PDF, which is perfect. Um, it means now that if I want to draw a path that's 1.5 meters wide, it's going to be 1.5 meters wide in relation to the PDF. So that is really um, the best place to start when you're bringing in your PDF is setting up your dimensions. OK. Um, there is another way of doing that, which I'll just show you quickly before we sign up. We'll cancel that for a minute. Um, when you go into modify scale objects, you can use symmetric by distance, but you can also use this tool here to actually um, either uh, dimension the current um, distance. So um, I could have used this tool and gone to my 15.3 and figured out what the current one was. And it comes up with the, pretty much what we want. Or I could have gone and just highlighted what the new distance needed to be. So you can use this tool a little bit differently. This asymmetric tool doesn't get used very much. Um, it gives you the option of scaling your X axis, which is your horizontal axis, differently to your Y axis. Um, so are you normally sort of sticking up to this symmetric by distance or symmetric itself? So I'm just going to cancel out of that because we've done what we've needed to. And there we have it. We have a PDF it's been inserted into our scaled A3 page. Um, so that's the end of this tutorial. Uh, hopefully it's uh, suitable, but please, if you've got any issues with it, um, give me a bell or send me an email and uh, we'll see what we can do. Anyway, thank you very much. Bye.